Sir Manuel, our 5 p.m. session mm -hmm. is about to start. Uh, Sir Manuel has joined us to talk with Zoya and us. And anybody in the session here is welcome to stay on. We'll be recording the session as, as well, right, Zoya, for the other students wanting to look at it on the website. And Sir Manuel is going to tell us about his background, his fantastic business school, his scholarships, and his online courses that he has available for students and as well I think he can clarify I think they actually do support people into employment their their students and their graduates but Sir Manuel is the the man of the hour he's joined <laughs> us I hope maybe Welcome. he can unmute himself and maybe his video might work but I will leave him in your capable hands Zoya thank you very much Rox and hi Olga nice nice to see some faces appearing um, okay, well, that was a pretty cool introduction. So I, I think uh, the ball is on your side now. So Professor Emmanuel, how do you pronounce this? Frey Garibau? Yeah, it's correct. Oh, okay. I, I could never uh, <laughs> read the two extra characters. So um, we've been actually, I think, in touch with Al Khalifa Business School uh, through my different Kiosk colleagues. But I think it would be great if you could shares Roxad your personal background and experience as well as the activities that your school is now undertaking so the courses that are aimed at helping students to get proper jobs so over to you please yeah of course well I founded this business school one year ago uh, and despite we are a very young institution we could get uh, some achievements no? Also here, it's uh, Professor Organ Ross in the conversation. She also knows very well some of the things we're doing now. So basically, what we want is not just offering courses for general population. It's to offer quality and opportunities for people. That's why our main interest in NIOS is not just to offer knowledge, uh, content, uh, academic content. No? It's how to help people for the practical way in their lives. That's why, for example, our courses are close to the 70% uh, cheaper than the courses that are offered by a normal business school. No? And that's why what we give is practical tips to the people. And after giving them these practical tips, it's, well, you helped us to grow, so now we want to help you to uh, have a good career. No? That's why we have different kind of networks with family offices, with companies uh, worldwide that will give to these students the opportunity to have just maybe the first internship, but they will get it. No? Manuel, may I interrupt you for a second? C can you uh, give an idea of the school location and whether the delivery is online or offline? Because this session that we record now will be shared later on with the whole community of um, EBB. Thank you. Well, we have uh, just our registering office uh, in the UK, but we have also different uh, locations worldwide. No? Now we, are, uh, we work online, but we are with uh, people in 30 countries and in these 30 countries in 60 locations. So this is just if any of our students wants to meet uh, our agents, representatives or professors, or just to meet somebody that can help them, uh, maybe just with mentoring, they can uh, go to them and ask the questions that they have. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So it's online studies accessible from anywhere in the world. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, b b back to your points about uh, giving access to experience. Well, nowadays we have a good network with many kind of family offices, companies, and also big companies that uh, sometimes offer internships or collaborations with our students. No? So that's why when also someone finishes the, the school with us, we ask them, well, what do you need now? No? In which area do you want to be involved with? But now, what we are doing, it's, in my opinion, something little. That's why our main intention is to project something bigger. That's why in the following month, we're going to launch a new program that it's called the uh, HBS Innovation Venture Lab. 
that is dedicated to promote the ideas of our students. We already started with that, no? So for example, in the professional certifications that we launched this year, what we do is to select the best jobs that the students did. So if, for example, the press management certification, if they, we see that they have great abilities in press, we ask to them, would you ask, uh, give the consent to share with our people? So if our companies are interested to work with them, they will promote also this job that they are doing. So it's more like uh, not seeded funding, but supporting the startups and projects yes. and helping them grow. I wish we have spoken a month ago because Kias has been running um, a big, it's not, a, well, it is a conference in a way, but it's also like an Oscar for high education innovation. It's called Reimagine Education. Mm -hmm. And uh, every, it takes place uh, every December. Uh, for the previous five years, it's been running in, at Wharton, on Wharton campus in the US. Last year, it took place in London. And this year is going virtual as everything else in this world. And this is a platform to showcase projects that young people develop that have impact either on education or career or research curiosity. So what I'm, unfortunately, the deadline for submission has passed. Um, and okay, the prizes, I can't say that the prices are humongous. It's just $50,000, but it can be a good start for some of the project. But what's more important, it's visibility. So it's a community of investors, universities, startups, and young professionals. I'm going to share in our chat the link to the um, reimagine different award categories. I'd be more than happy to reconnect with you later on and to see maybe for the next year, you can encourage some of the projects that you support and you identify as impactful in, say, employability or learning or sustainability. Uh, we'd be more than happy to welcome them at, as a part of the Reimagine Education competition. Excellent. So how do you, may I ask, how do you um, engage with young people? How do you bring them on board? How do you inform them about your university? Well, basically, we're working mainly with our representatives. We have All close right. to 100 representatives worldwide and they reach in different kinds of communities through social networks to also personal talking with the new students. So we have okay. different days. But it's not enough, you know. <laughs> well, that, that's why I'm curious because uh, I, I think this year has shown to many universities and higher education professionals that digital learning is the future. And whether you like it or not, but that's what's going to happen going forward. I mean, if you look at, uh, say, India, uh, in March, they have accepted, the Minister of Education has confirmed that uh, state universities can have up to 30% of their curriculum being t delivered online. And it's not necessarily their own courses, but they can engage with Coursera, edX, and others. And they will count this towards the credits uh, for the regular diploma. So I'm just curious whether it's something that you guys consider engaging with the governments on the national level and offering your courses as a part of potential national or international curriculum. For example, now we are working on that, no? because some months ago we developed it with the India Foundation, a webinar in which some recommendations were taken. That's why the governor of Telangana asked it to us to, re to make a reduction about uh, recommendations for the new educational policy of India. So okay. the recommendations that we are trying to apply maybe will be used for the next year regarding to that. Oh, great. India is a fantastic market from, from this perspective. And there are also lots of young people who otherwise might not be able to have any access to education if it's not online. Well, how are we, we doing? Hmm? Yeah, please, please, go ahead. No, no, sorry. I just wanted to ask how we're doing with video. No, just, it, it was downloaded, so if you want to, we'll share. Yes, please. I need... You can share the uh, screen. I need to have... Uh, I need to have able to uh, have a screen share. The host has to give me the... Okay. Uh, 
Okay, I'll put you a host. I'll make you a host, so you should be able to. Do you want to change? Yes, I do want. Excellent. Thank you so okay. much. Okay, there you go. good enough <laughs> sorry I did realize I was muted no I was saying that uh, I think it was an interesting overview and I think with a very powerful message that it's not just about education but it's also the way beyond education okay and um, Olga you've been with us uh, for the whole session are you a part of uh, the team as well Yeah, she's one of our directors mm -hmm. in the program. So uh, she's doing a great job, especially with many artists. And artists? She, yeah, hopefully for the next year to make also some exhibitions with us and also oh, wow. make promotion of different events she's doing now. She's also That's the exciting. head of the, our art journal. So she's making many publications about many artists, also young artists that. Uh, from Russia, from Germany, in different parts of Europe. So she's doing- That's a very unusual thing. I mean, the creative arts is usually staying away from digital world, especially when it comes down to like performing arts. Uh, well, may maybe for artists in uh, and painting and sculpture is different, but that's, that's a fantastic initiative. Well, I think that uh, she will be delighted to talk about also. I, um, I'm just trying to see, it looks like Olga doesn't have a mic. Uh, Olga, can, can, can you hear us? Can, can, you, can you talk? Olga. No, pr probably you'll have to do it on her behalf. Well, next time I'm sure she, she will do an excellent contribution about. Okay. Um, may I ask while we have, you know, uh, this session running, which will be later on shared uh, by Rox and, your, uh, and the team of Educating Beyond Borders. Uh, what will be your tips? What will be your recommendations for young professionals who are, you know, who are still in their student years, but are struggling to secure um, internships and uh, employments? What will be your recommendations for them? You know, because I'm also young and you know what uh, to be in that situation, I will say, don't take into account all that you are uh, having in your memory now, because in one year, two years, all of that will disappear. You will have, yes, a lot of theory, but theory is just to pass exams. 
if you want to make something in your life, try to make almost one internship. Because if you are going to be an, an own entrepreneur or if you are going to be hired by a company, they don't care about titles. If you go now to a company and you say, oh, I have this MBA, even from Ivy League, they say, okay, yeah, I have 100 people more here. So what do you do, no? Which are your abilities? So first of all, gain abilities. And we're not talking about being with the best professional in law or in economy. It's if you can make also to have a, a, um, a summer job with your father or a summer job uh, in a cafe, many people would prefer you because of that and not because of your titles. I know very well, for example, one of the biggest companies so in my country, in Spain, if you go to them saying, my average on the school was of 100%, they say, okay, yeah, you have good memory, please. Uh, try to be a judge, no? So go to uh, and have public uh, oppositions to, have, to be a judge. But if you are a guy with uh, a 70%, but you were having just many tips of uh, in own entrepreneurship or to work in maybe in a cafe or making sales or whatever, maybe you can become vice president with that. So gain real life experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, uh, well, Im impressing HRs, because whether we want it or not, but we still have to follow their protocols. In your experience, what works really well with HRs these days? What would you recommend young professionals to bear in mind while working on their CVs? First of all, if you are a guy from 20 years old or close to 20 or even close to 30, don't try to be mixed with guys of 30, 40, or even 50. Try to be with the oldest because you will learn a lot with them. And when they see that someone we, that really appreciates what they are doing, this can help you a lot. So that's why also when you are mixing with guys of your age, you can have competition. With others, no, because uh, they are more than you, so you are not a competition but you can have benefit of being with them because you can learn a lot. Hmm. Interesting tip, quite an unusual one, I would say. No, but really it's the truth because, for example, all of my friends, I only have two friends of my age who study with me. Mm -hmm. uh, the others, you know, I think that the friend, uh, the youngest friend I have is for or 50, maybe. I am every time with people that has uh, the double age of me. So well, it's, it's, I really prefer that. It's, I agree that it's a great way to learn for the, from the best. Yeah. Uh, it just, it's not always easy to get you know, to the level where you can engage with them and uh, truly learn and follow what they are doing because you might be in a more junior role. So hence you'll, be, uh, you'll have limited access, let's put it this way. But it, it is an important tip, I agree. And um, one of the topics that was uh, raised earlier today, it uh, was related to migrants, um, working migrants in the UK. Um, what would you suggest are the most, no, let me rephrase, what you wish you'd known when you were a student yourself? Well, when I was a student, uh that I would change a lot of things. So if I would get this tip, uh, you know, I always work with people older than me from Malaya, no? but uh, mm -hmm. if I could learn more about not to mix, especially with people of my age, would be much better now. Because you can have, well, also it's good, you know, from different side to consider, no? it's good because you learn how is people at the beginning, when they are really hungry, and they want to take all, you see that there's not a scrupulous. So you see how people really. Mm -hmm. So if in that time you could treat or you could take more into account the recommendations of uh, your seniors, especially from parents, grandparents and say, no, don't mix with this guy and don't argue with him, would be much better, no? Because you could prevent a lot of damage. Interesting. Yeah. I, I, I bet many, many of our listeners will strongly disagree with this recommendation. <laughs> but okay, point taken. So learn from the more experienced 
people. That's one. What else would you tell yourself when you were a student? Exactly. But you know, many people think, oh, it's quite difficult to reach to these people. And it's just because of attitude. Because if you're arrogant, because you know, when you're young, the tendency is to be arrogant, you know, to say, oh, I have disabilities, I'm very good. No, the typical behavior that you can learn in a business school, try to sell yourself. Mm -hmm. No, that's not good. When you're trying to sell yourself, it's like, oh my God, this guy is desesperated, so he is being forced to sell that to me. No, you just said to, you only have to be polite and to hear before talk. Because if you are talking, saying, oh, I this, I make this, I have these qualifications, I want to do that, says, oh my God, another bullshit that is trying to come to me, no? But when, for example, you come to a guy in an event, an oldie, who is maybe alone, and just to say, oh, hi, nice to meet you. Uh, I really like your speech. This guy says, oh, well, maybe this uh, guy is interesting, so I will talk uh, more with him. Just to listen, all that you will learn is much more that you can get selling yourself. Okay. Well, actually, this probably can be tied to the one of the famous LinkedIn recommendations that try not just to listen, but to hear mm -hmm. so that you don't just pretend you're sitting there and you're yearning and waiting for the session or whatever you're uh, to finish, but genuinely be engaged. And you know, but, it's really funny because nowadays, for example, when you're coming to a different kind of events, you no, know, you go to many all over the year, always you see that uh, people with experience, they are really tired. What they really want, they are there because maybe they are the owners of the company, so they just have to be there because of image, you know. And when you see how young guys are coming to them to sell their new idea about blockchain, about the same blockchain, AE, finance, things like that, says, oh, another guy like that. So what you have to do is just to help this person to be relaxed. That's the point. To hear and to not to be a friend or trying to be a friend because this is <laughs> also you can uh, have a, a, a diplomatic problem, no? But just to hear, to be polite. With that, you can learn a lot. From my experience, you know, uh, I could get many of my friends because of that. You just have to be polite and to listen. Okay, well, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm not totally convinced that the key to success but I agree that it's an important ability to listen and to engage with people and to resonate with them on the same level as uh, they are and to find not just, you know, talk about what's interesting or relevant for you, but also make sure they have a space and a chance to talk about what's interesting and relevant for them. But if we are talking about young professionals, say, last years of bachelor programs. What do you think are the best career tips for them, practical career tips in terms of building careers? So we've mentioned already gaining real life experience for internships, through apprenticeships, through free projects. And uh, we've covered pretty much this at the previous session. So mingle with the senior, with the mature professionals and learn from them. What else? The thing is to have, you know, to be good in your job, because if you are just trying to connect with somebody, so you are a networker, coach or something, and you have no content, sooner or later you will be discovered. So I don't have a job yet. I'm a student, so I, I, I'm trying to find a job. You know, you need to have to know how to do something, always, despite okay. be uh, just writing or to try to get abilities. No? First of all, you, have, you need to have something in your life. Because life's without content, you can try to drop too many things, but uh, <laughs> one has to be fixed in your life. No? Maybe when you're a student, you like so much to study law, but after, when you meet someone, you can be forced to study economy no? and to be an expert in the economy. No? So always to have something in your life. And also with your seniors, trying to have a connection. 
you know, it's funny, but I know one experience. Once I was with uh, someone who was working with a politician, no? but he didn't like this politician. So I came to him and I say, well, uh, you were working with this guy, no? And he says, yes, yes, yes. I s and I know it that uh, they didn't have good relations. So I said to him, oh yeah, I think that you were much better than him. He was saying, oh yeah, he had this problem, this another problem, this another problem. Finally to listen and to see him, you know, was just like a joke, no? But seeming that we have a connection. After all, he said to me, well, guy, why are you here? How may I help you? Just to having a connection. After this connection, you demonstrate the abilities you have, but always being humble. In the, not in the 100% of times it's done, but maybe in the 80 or the 70 years. Okay. Because you know what this guy wants, but also he knows that you have something in your life, that you are not going to show the same that everybody shows to him. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's see if uh, Rox has any questions for us, because she was, unfortunately, see, with all this technical struggle, we are not able to stream it live. So she was collecting the questions previously. Um, oh, and she can't hear us. Okay. Um, okay, well, then we can maybe move to scholarships because I know you've got some offered by your school. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you well, tell us a little bit more about those? Well, about the school, um, we're trying to make some new things nowadays. No? For example, the last month, we also launched a new pro program to more, more people worldwide. Now we have almost 5,000 students now, but our intention is with our latest program to have minimum 200,000 students per year, giving them general business education at very low price. Mm -hmm. So our intention is to these people, to get them the possibility also to continue their studies, even with us or with another schools in their own locations. For example, we are reaching now many governments that this education that we are going to offer will be accredited in the country. So with that, they can make, for example, the first year online and the second or third, or if they want to make a different career, this study will work so they can continue their studies with the almost free education that we get to them. And the thing is also that this education that it is at $1 per day is not paying by people, it's paying by the states. That's very good. But how do you, may I also ask, how do you engage with employers? Because uh, one of your USPs of your business schools that you bring, you know, education and uh, work experience together. So w how do you engage with employers? They, especially now, you know, when after six months in a uh, very weird year, <laughs> uh, employers are quite struggling. Sorry? Online. Always online. For example, mm -hmm. I have many employees, I... We always met uh, maybe by Zoom or something, but uh, to some, we never meet in person, no? But uh, we are having good relation and good connection because of that, no? So always talking from the point A to the point Z. No, but I mean, how do you, why would employers say, yeah, definitely, Al Khalifa students are guaranteed employment within our company? So, I could the question. Sorry, no, I'm uh, I'm trying to figure out mm -hmm. how you engage with employers, oh, uh, okay. so that they engage, they engage and they hire your students because that was from what I could see on the website of your business school. It was one of the main USPs, right, for people to get education. You know, basically because of the big networks we have, we always can find job for almost everybody. No? So, uh, for example, from our students, I think that the 90% pass with uh, between the 90 to the 100% in the, mm. in the average, no? because we make the things not simple. We make it uh, in the good average of, uh, of hard or medium level. But what uh, we do always is promote them. So that's why we, in, if they agree, we always send their uh, resumes or their abilities to our associates. 
and always they can find something. You know, the spite could be an internship or maybe also even an online job because we have many people doing online job mm -hmm. uh, as assistants, uh, also giving them contracts as freelancers to another companies. They always have the form to, to get a job, no? For example, we have many who are maybe their own freelancers in many countries like Pakistan, in India, but because we met many companies in the US or in Europe that need someone to be trained, for example, in coaching or in video edition or in something, they always get a job. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I guess that's the strength of your diverse networks, right? And diverse contacts that it's, it spreads all over the world through your personal ones and the uh, representatives one. But um, just to, for me to understand, when the person engages uh, with your university and signs up for the course, are they still able to work? Are they able to combine studying uh, online and working? Or is it, uh, does it require full dedication? You know, for example, now we are talking about mainly about the courses, no? We get the accreditation to have bachelors, uh, associates, and degrees close to uh, three weeks ago, no? But for example, with the courses, the SPIDE could be a one month course, can be taken, for example, for one year, because we never say you, you should to have to make that in one week or two weeks, no. Uh, so it's like Coursera's model where the, the user can manage his or her own time. Brilliant. So it means people. Courses, so. People they can combine can. work and studies. Okay. And um, uh, well, Rox has messaged me a, a tip. Uh, if I could please ask you about your approach to designing the courses. And because uh, uh, apparently you've created courses for top American universities and other institutions around the world. Uh, how do you approach this? How do you create the courses for institutions and for universities? Well, nowadays we um, are only working with people from, from other universities. I help it uh, just as a professor or visiting to many other, no? but uh, just because I was having collaboration with them. No? But for example, nowadays, our intention, and also we are doing that with many people from other universities, especially from the Ivy League, we have many professors who help us to develop the contents. So for example, we have a great quality of a very affordable price. So it's also, it's almost like, you know, uh, corporate social responsibility projects. So people donate their time to develop courses for your institution, right? They do it because of friends. No, mainly because of friendship, no? So they want us to be bigger. Many times they don't say, I am the professor of that, no? So, but they give the knowledge because they want, no? So um, mm -hmm. it's working very well for the moment. And we have a, a great team of professors, uh, especially in Asia nowadays, that are helping us a lot and making mm -hmm. very good uh, quality content. And how do you identify the direction? Like for example, uh, for the next six months, we want to focus, uh, our attention on X, Y, Z courses. So for example, Olga says, I want to have 20 more courses on performing arts or in uh, architecture or on whatever. Um, or, or how do you serve the market to identify the needs? You know, because I don't like in shots. Uh, I made this because I wanted to have a long-term project and maybe a lifetime project. No? So that's why we offer the things that we know that people will want always. For example, on the last year or last two years, you could see everybody wanted to have a course on blockchain, blockchain management, things like that. Now everybody is worried about blockchain. So for example, we have many courses in blockchain. Yeah, people had a good result with them. But you see, it's not the same like the classical course that everybody would want. For instance, mm -hmm. in the last uh, certification we have about press management, everybody's joining because always people would need about to promote companies, to promote themselves, to promote projects. And it's something classical that since uh, the press is existing, it's working. No? You always need to know how to promote a business, how to write, no? even no? because we have many students that what they are doing there it's to making better the ability to write. Mm -hmm. 
So that's why classical courses are always working. No? With health science, always we will need health professionals. That's why, for example, now we are looking for half uh, also many degrees in health because one of our associates, uh, one university from Asia, is having also health degrees. No, I think it's important because nowadays, for example, are needed 8.6 million of uh, health professionals in the world. Mm -hmm. So classical things always will work. If nowadays, for example, appears at, um, a new movement about uh, finance banking through uh, by the cloud with a new program, yes, maybe it can be useful for, for one or two years. With big data, you could see it. three years ago, big data was the main topic. When you come to the web, big data, only big data. When you go to an event, was blockchain, every time blockchain. Nowadays, people is forgetting about blockchain. And you see, for example, how many schools, the profit that they are having now is because of health technologies, for example. Oh no, the UK is probably one of the worst cases. So yeah, definitely, it is a high demand. It's for example, like we said before, when you go to owner of the company and you say, I know it because of the conference I attend. Oh, I have this idea about blockchain. And the, that year, maybe they had 100 people talking about blockchain. They are very, very tired of hearing this word. So maybe you say to them, no, I'm dedicated to create masks. You know, maybe some months ago, we were laughing about people who say, oh, I have a mask fac a factory. They say, oh, yeah, you were never, you only took back to hospitals, no? And now it did it worldwide. A classical product that was used maybe from uh, many decades. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about opportunities for students and young professionals within your own university? Uh, are you collaborating with students in any way? Always. You know, many also, when we see that they have great abilities, they became to start as lecturers in our courses. So or even if they want to learn how works an institution, we allow them to work with us, no? Okay, also, so we're getting to a very nice and practical area here. So what will be, what you suggest should be the steps for young kids who want to learn how to run, I don't know, a business school, an online project, a course, should mm -hmm. they just uh, approach you for the website? Is there a particular section on the uh, Al Khalifa Business School area where they should go? They can contact us directly. So I always also lose, used to uh, read all that people write. I am maybe forwarded uh, in silent in almost of the mails of the company. So. I always know. You everybody. clearly have lots of time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, just uh, making a fast view, always. Sure. I always know all that happens. No, for instance, in uh, the business school, I am the only owner. I am the chairman, and I have an advisory committee. I know what happens since the beginning. So, and I think it's very important to know all about that. Sure, but it also, it, it, it's important that you're able to scale when the time comes. I think that's... Also, but um, you know, for example, one of the, I think he's one of the most wise people existing in my country, is the owner of the company Inditex, uh, the, of the shop Stara, no? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I've been many times there at the factory, I have many good friends there, and it's typical to see him walking you know, the owner of one of the, I think he's the five fortune in the world nowadays, walking around the factory. Maybe sometimes he's in the garden saying to the gardener, please cut this plant in this shape. Mm -hmm. So I think that this is very important. For example, this man doesn't, has an office, but just for institutional uh, welcomes. No? But where he works, it's in the main production part of the, of the factory. He has a big table. And every party, sh uh, every people shows to them what they are doing. Oh, do you like this cloth? Yeah, I like it. If they don't like, and he doesn't like it, he makes the what is needed to uh, to arrange it. So stay staying grounded, yeah, staying down to earth, and not getting too carried away with your title or your wealth. Exactly. Yeah, no, I I agree. It is crucial, and also 
one of the things that quite often employers complain about when we uh, run our annual employer survey at PS, it's the how aspirations that young graduates have don't have pretty much anything solid to be based on. So to expect a company to give you a job just because you have a degree is, well, it doesn't work anymore in today's world. It's more about what your portfolio has, which skills you have, but not so much about what kind of degree you have or even which university you've graduated from. I don't know, what's your observation? Do you see the same trend that everyone is moving towards real skills and abilities rather than formal education and diplomas? I think so, because you know, also I hate a lot the philosophy of the CEOs or the executives, things like that. And the people uh, that I know who are owners of the companies, but big companies, no, at uh, high levels, they think the same. Finally, it's like in the army. You see that the general, it's always there. The general can talk with everybody, but maybe a colonel can't talk with a sergeant. And this happens in the companies, no? And founders and owners doesn't like the behaviors of colonels or even of surgeons. Maybe they prefer to treat with the soldier. True. No, I, I, I agree. I agree. Okay. I don't know, Rox, can you hear us? Are there any questions that you've collected previously and we haven't answered? Box. Okay, I don't think she can hear us. And um, okay, well, I think we've done pretty well for this session. Is there anything particular you want to share with young professionals who will be listening to this recording? So, just a reminder: the idea of today's of the whole day uh, today's session was to give young kids, international students uh, who are in the UK, as many practical tips as possible when it comes down to their position on the job market, securing the first jobs, and what are the actions they need to undertake in order to, you know, to be more competitive on the global uh, job market. So anything to add on this one? In my opinion, what I said before, they always need to have something particular that identifies themselves as not the typical project that you will always hear. No, to be unique. So mm -hmm. if you want to have something in the market, you should be unique. Maybe, you know, you can have the same knowledge about law, about economy, about health, but if you are just a best person than your competitor, you will be chosen. And it's just to be human beings, unique human beings. And to be humble. Yes. <laughs> That's the thing. No, but, that, but it is important. I think it's also important and probably worth mentioning that I think it's, it's the right balance about being humble, but also not being overly shy and be able to present your skills and achievements. Because exactly. um, one thing I've noticed and sorry exactly can you hear me guys ah okay so it's just fr freezing freezing a little bit no i was just saying that in some cultures it's not that common to praise yourself i don't know whether olga would agree or no so uh, judging by the name i would imagine olga is also like me coming from eastern europe and in our culture you literally it's bad to praise yourself. It's bad to say, oh, I'm such and such, I've done this and that, I've gained those prizes, etc." However, if we look at the Western Hemisphere, North America, if you don't do that, you're a loser, right? You stand no chance in the global competition. So I think for the UK, it's important um, to find this right balance, to stay true to yourself, but also show off your skills and strengths because otherwise you won't be able to compete. Um, okay, Rox is messaging me that uh, are we letting international? Are you letting international students start in 2021 instead of October 2020 in terms of work experience? I'm not sure I understand 
the no, question? that she is talking about that I work with many other universities in Europe now. So many of them are offering now, mm -hmm. uh, because of COVID, to study in Europe. No? Because it's quite difficult to apply for visas nowadays, because you know, sure. many delays and courses are starting now, because they, um, for example, in Portugal, the courses are starting on October 21st. Because of that, what uh, I am uh, offering to many people uh, it's that they can study, for example, apply for visa with the study of a course in a European uh, university. So they can use this visa they have for this course to continue their study because they have almost these visas for one or two years to continue the study after in the next year of October in a degree. So, okay, so you know, it's many, extending for a year. Mm -hmm. so, you know, in many countries, for example, if you come from India, from Pakistan, from also from even from China, you need to know the to have the degree, the language of the country. So, for example, in Spain, to have to pass an Spanish exam in Portugal, to pass a Portuguese exam in Italy, the same. So that's why I recommend if they want to enter to apply for the courses for the language. So they can do that because it's easy to get it in six months. They also can have a 20 hours of a job. They can apply for that in the visa, no, after. When they mm -hmm. to work 10 hour, uh, 20 hours per week. And then maybe they can pay their studies with the, and they can have also profit with the things that they are doing, studying and working in a European country. Okay, got you. Now, now I understand the question. Thank you very much for expanding on this one.